The word polyp comes from the Greek language where it means a little foot. But when you apply that to the colon or rectum, it just means a bump on the internal lining of the bowel. In the medical world, polyps are bumps that occur on the lining of the bowel. Well, what causes them? Now, polyps arise because of the genetic changes that happen in the cells lining the colon that make them grow faster than they should and not die when they should. We're not aware of this usually, but the cells that lining the colon only live for about a week and then they die and shed are replaced by new cells. Doctor, are you aware that researchers from Johns Hopkins have found that dense mats of interacting bacteria called biofilm are present in the majority of cancer and polyps, particularly those on the right side of the colon? The researchers also identified the types of bacteria found in the colon tissues through genetic sequencing. Could it be that these bacteria are causing the genetic damage you mentioned? The PCR stool tests by Genova and DRG Labs are used to identify the types of bacteria found in the colon tissues through genetic sequencing, something that cannot be done with SIBO breath test or stool culture testing. Culture studies have their limitations, especially when evaluating live anaerobic fecal cultures. Stool cultures have the ability to identify only living organisms that are not attached to the tissues. They have found that the same species of bacteria that were present in tumors from people with or without biofilms. Let's explore that further by looking at the stages of bacteria biofilm and polyp development. Biofilm is a defense mechanism for the bacteria to protect themselves from digestive chemistry, antibiotics, and the immune system. In the biofilm life cycle, in phase one, bacteria can attach to any unprotected surfaces in the body. This is why they're having such problems with artificial joint replacements. It's the biofilm from the bacteria that's causing the early deterioration. Biofilm formation is also seen in nasal and sinus polyps. Polyps are soft, non-cancerous growths in the nose and sinuses. They can grow very large and block the nasal passages, sinuses, and even your sense of smell. Notice there's no mention of bacteria responsible for building the biofilm then enlarges into polyps despite DNA testing showing the bacteria in the polyps. Even H. pylori, a stomach bacteria, is found in sinus polyps and ear infections with DNA testing. Watch this sinus polyp removal carefully. We are told that polyps are outgrowths of the lining of the sinus cavities. If polyps are outgrowths of the epithelial lining of the gastrointestinal tract or the sinus passages, why are they suctioning them off instead of cutting away the tissue? Why is there no bleeding? It isn't until we get into the deeper recesses of the sinus passages that the bacteria creating the biofilm and the polyps has been able to make connection with the blood supply. The first step in biofilm formation is bacterial attachment to the unprotected surface. The next stage in biofilm formation is the growth phase. This should be kept in check by a healthy gastrointestinal environment and the production of digestive chemistry. Many would ask, well, what about the immune system? Why not stimulate the immune system? Well, the answer simply is that white blood cells of the immune system do not migrate through the intestines and into the fecal material. If white blood cells were found in significant numbers in the fecal material, 
it would probably be a case for hospitalization and some kind of surgical intervention. Bacterial biofilm polyp formation repeats this process through the entire gastrointestinal tract, from the mouth and the nasal passages to the vocal cords, through the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. If they remain attached just to the surface of the mucosal lining throughout the gastrointestinal tract, they're usually considered to be benign. You can see in this video clip the polyp being plucked from the mucosal lining and when it's removed there's no bleeding. You can see another polyp come into view as the first polyp is being removed. The bacteria in the second polyp have been there long enough to where they've actually been able to access the blood supply through the intestinal lining. When polyps are attached to the lining of the gastrointestinal tract or the sinuses, they will begin triggering signals that stimulate the formation of new blood vessels into the polyps. Bacteria biofilm is used by bacteria to protect themselves from the digestive chemistry the immune system, and antibiotics. The bacteria are opportunistic. They actively seek out iron, zinc, and sulfur needed for their reproduction and survival. They will defend themselves from the immune system and each other by hacking into the immune system and sharing drug-resistant genes. This is enhanced when they have access to the blood supply. Polyps with a blood supply are called adenomas. Both commensal and pathogenic bacteria are able to access the blood supply sharing bacterial antigens and inflammatory metabolites in the adenomas. When the epithelial barrier is breached there will be mucosal ingrowth of the biofilm which allows microbial invasion stimulating an immune response. However, the bacteria have already hacked into the immune system and it's under their control. The immune system will begin producing antibodies to the intestinal lining, ignoring the bacteria that have made its way into the system. Depending on the degree that the bacteria have control of the immune system, Using immune stimulating supplements may actually stimulate an autoimmune attack on the gastrointestinal lining. You can access more of this information in the Mastering the Gut program at masteringthegut.com. Symptoms associated with colon polyps may be rectal bleeding, changes in stool color, changes in bowel habits, pain, nausea or vomiting, and iron deficiency anemia. Well, when it comes to the anemia, is it from the bleeding or is it from the bacteria seeking out sources of iron in the red blood cells causing anemia of chronic inflammation? There's a direct correlation between the development of blood supply to the polyps and portal hypertension. You can see the engorgement of the mesenteric blood vessels in this CT scan. In cases of portal hypertension, when the polyps are receiving blood supply, this is also when internal and external hemorrhoids are going to be seen. With diminished supplies of neuroendocrine transmitters such as serotonin and GABA, the body will no longer be able to control the diameter of the blood vessels and they will begin enlarging, causing the internal hemorrhoids. In this video, you can see the internal hemorrhoid being irritated by the colonoscopy probe. In those with portal hypertension, the blood vessels surrounding the organs in the abdomen are engorged. Internal and external hemorrhoids are indications that this is occurring. This excess blood supply makes it easy for the blood vessels to grow into the polyps. You can access this course information at masteringthegut.com.